Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the Canadian Forces Snowbirds will be returning to Air Venture. The Land Sport Aviation Showcase announces 2020 event date, and the world's first commercial electric airplane is flown for the first time. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. The Canadian Forces Snowbirds will make Air Avenger a part of their 50th year performance schedule in 2020. The announcement was made official at the ICAST convention, and this will be the first time the Snowbirds have appeared at Air Avenger since 2016. This year's Air Venture will be held July 20th through the 26th, and the Snowbirds are currently scheduled to have public practice sessions over the grounds on Friday, July 24th. With full performances during the daily afternoon air show on Saturday and Sunday, July 25th and 26th. The Snowbirds were created in 1971 and have a nearly 50-year connection to EAA, as they were the first military team to perform at Oshkosh in the 1970s. The Snowbirds fly Canadair CT-114 Tudor jets and approximately 60 shows each year. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Un einem globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. Welcome back, it's time for today's trip around the patch. Boeing and Bell Textron delivered the first modified MV-22 Osprey to the Marine Corps. The Marines have multiple configurations of the MV-22 aircraft in service. Under the Common Configuration Readiness and Modernization Program, Bell Boeing is reducing the number of configurations by upgrading Block B aircraft to the current Block C configuration. The next CC Ram delivery is expected in early 2020. The remains of an F-4F Wildcat have been found at the bottom of the St. Johns River in northeast Florida and is believed to have gone down some time between 1943 and 1945. The airplane was first noticed on a radar image by a local fisherman about three years ago who contacted the underwater criminal investigators. The investigators originally thought the aircraft was a drug runner plane, but later discovered it was a military fighter. The plane's exact location is being kept a secret by investigators. The city of Monmouth, Illinois said it could take as long as two years to rebuild structures destroyed in a fire back on October 25th. City Administrator Lou Steinbrecher says just permitting the new building could take as long as 18 months. Steinbrecher also stated the city council has not yet decided on the best way to proceed, but hopes to have a recommendation to put before the council by February of 2020. The FAA proposed a civil penalty of more than $3.9 million against Boeing for installing non-conforming components on approximately 133 aircraft, which Boeing subsequently presented as ready for airworthiness certification. The FAA alleges Boeing failed to adequately oversee its suppliers to ensure they complied with the company's quality assurance system. The agency contends this failure resulted in the installation of slat tracks that were weakened by a condition known as hydrogen embrittlement. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. The Sling 2, a modern economical flight training airplane for today's pilots. 120 knot crews, sporty handling, sliding bubble canopy, modern glass panel, and dependable Rotax power. Available in LSA or kit versions. Check it out at airplanefactory.com.
The Deland Sport Aviation Showcase has been studying results, comments, and statistics from the recently concluded 2019 event and is now ready for their next event, which will be held November 12th through the 14th of 2020. The 2019 event surpassed expectations with 20 new vendors and exhibitors and an increase in attendance. A number of popular vendors reported solid sales of new and used airplanes, aviation accessories, and assorted services. Attendees and exhibitors praised the preparation of the event team and professionalism of the support staff largely composed of volunteers. The exhibitor-oriented passport program provided on-site visitors an incentive to make sure they saw as much of the showcase as possible. A sole aircraft exhibition was a surefire winner, with attendees flocking to the flight lined at the end of each day to see the short takeoff and landing display in real time. Harbor Air, North America's largest seaplane airline, and Magni X, the company powering the electric aviation revolution announced a very short but otherwise successful flight of what they call the world's first all-electric commercial aircraft. The successful flight of the E-plane took place on the Fraser River at Harbor Air Seaplane's terminal in Richmond Tuesday morning. The plane was piloted by Harbor Air CEO and founder Greg McDougall. Earlier this year, Harbor Air announced its partnership with MagniX and the company's intention to build the world's first completely electric commercial seaplane fleet. The Magni 500, which was unveiled at the Paris Air Show in June, is a high-power density electric propulsion system that provides a clean and efficient way to power airplanes. Magni X and Harbor Air will now begin the certification and approval process for the propulsion system and the retrofitting of the aircraft. Once the certification is complete, the rest of the fleet can be magnified with Magni X's all-electric propulsion technology. And that's it for our week, everyone. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. To stay up to date on the latest aviation and aerospace news this weekend, just head over to aero-news.net. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you Monday.